Hello, I'm Perrin Westerhoff Nyman, instructor in costume studies in the Fountain School of Performing Arts at Dalhousie University, and I'd like to welcome you to the end of your presentations for Aesthetics of Historical Dress 2020 to 2021. I've been incredibly impressed by the enthusiasm and dedication shown by our students this year and by the work that they'll be presenting to you now. For much of this year, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the students were isolated both from each other and from the studio, and as a result it was not possible to conduct many of the in-person fittings and consultations that would normally be involved in creating full-scale bespoke garments. The students have therefore worked in half-scale, on mannequins that they padded up to reflect their own measurements and shapes. To best reflect this working method, the course this year focused on the early 20th century, when design houses and dressmakers were frequently working on mannequins. Working to reconstruct garments from 1911, specifically, the students spent the autumn term creating a full set of historical undergarments, including a set of combinations, a corset, and a corset cover. In the mock-up stage, the corset was actually created in full scale, so that the students would have the experience of creating a structural garment that would accurately, safely, and comfortably reshape a real body to suit the historical silhouette. In January, they created petticoats, and this spring, they have fully researched, designed, and constructed beautiful evening gowns using historical methods and materials throughout. And I know that they're very excited to share those with you now. So please enjoy these presentations of the completed half-scale 1911 wardrobes. Hi, my name is Shannon Tauber. I'm in my final year of the Costume Studies Diploma in the Fountain School of Performing Arts at Dalhousie University. Uh, this is a reproduction of a 1910 gown by Madame Percy. The original currently resides in the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. My gown is made out of aqua satin silk satin, a black cotton net, fringe, velvet, and black beading. Um, each layer is currently being held together and on all of the undergarments I made last semester. Those include uh, combinations, which is the first undergarment that goes on on the skin, as well as the corset, and then the corset cover, and finally uh, the petticoat, and then my, my gown. What you see here underneath is we have uh, our petticoat layer, keeping the shape of our gown over top. We have our silk layer, our black net layer, as well as this third black net layer. The bodice itself also has three layers of net. Uh, the pattern pieces for this gown uh, are drafted completely by myself or draped on the mannequin, referencing uh, actual patterns used in 1911 or 1910, as well as the lovely Janet Arnold who was able to fully examine a 1910 gown that currently resides in the Met. All of my closures for the back of my dress are down center back here and hidden by what I call the obi of the dress. It is mimicking the obi or the sash from Japanese garments of the time. Um, I also have a, a hidden closure here right at the side. Um, the gown is also as well structured by its own internal boned bodice, which helps also keep the shape of the gown. Each of the trims as well as the beading is all hand sewn by myself. Um, I hand set the sleeves due to the size. They would not fit on my sewing machine, uh, nor did I want to force them to fit. Um, the OB itself is a piece of velvet um, folded and held together by wiring shaping at the top. And there is a sheer panel in the net as well as different three layers as well on here. The original gown does have embroidery on it. Um, it would go on the front of the gown about a third of the way up, as well as underneath. It was applique pieces on the bodice. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to get that part of the dress done, but otherwise I am very happy with this gown. That is my gown. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Hello, I am Lauren Terrio. I'm in my last year of the Diploma in Costume Studies program at the Fountain School of Performing Arts at Dalhousie University. 
So we had the option to either recreate a gown from our time period, or we could design one that would have existed in our time period as well. So that's what I opted to do. So rather than picking my favorite gown from 1911, um, I picked a bunch of favorite gowns and I chose elements out of each of them that I really enjoyed. So here I just have a few of the gowns that I liked. These ones range from I believe 1910 to 1913. There were many more, but these are a few of the main ones here. Um, so things that I was really drawn to were sheer overlays, um, fringe, subtle beading, and the color mauve, like a mauve color palette. So my gown is made out of a, a cotton for the under bodice, and then that is covered with a mauve taffeta for the bodice and for the skirt, which is then covered with a russet silk chiffon to cover both of those layers. We then have a, a dusty mauve silk organza, which is peeking up at the neckline and in the back, um, which is decorated with glass beads um, along the neckline. And finally, uh, some of the edges are trimmed with a dusty rose uh, rayon fringe, which at the time would have been called artificial silk. Um, and I have all of the closures going up center back. So I used a combination of pattern drafting and draping to create my gown. The patterns that I used were primarily out of Janet Arnold's book, and she has a 1911 gown in there. So I use that for the bodice and base my skirt pattern off of that as well. Um, aside from that, I use draping to figure out the taffeta layer um, over top and then draping as well for the chiffon over the shoulders and um, along the skirt. So out of the photos that I have here, uh, this is a gown by Paul Pere. It was actually the first gown that I was drawn to and it's primarily because of the sheer overlaying and I love the layering um, of different kind of materials on the dress. And also there is a uh, like kind of a crisscross wrap, uh, wrap effect on the bodice. So I really enjoyed that and I did incorporate that into my gown here. Um, there is a, like the bodice does, wrap. And then these two gowns up top on the side are from antiquedress.com. Uh, this gown here, I enjoyed the gathering that it had at the sleeve head, so I did incorporate that into my chiffon here. And I also enjoyed the sheer at the neckline, so that is something that I incorporated into my neckline. Um, this gown from antiquedress.com, I, um, I really liked the subtle beading aspects of it. So uh, that is why I did just uh, a little bit of beading at the neckline and then um, a little bit more beading to kind of parallel it on the back. And my biggest source of inspiration was this gown that I have at the bottom here. So I used that to kind of justify why my gown is very like monochromatic, just several shades of mauve, because this gown here is several shades of blue. Um, I also loved the chiffon overlay on this gown. I loved how the uh, neckline and along the back come into a V. Um, so that's something that I incorporated into my gown as well. And of course the fringe at the sleeve head and the fringe along the chiffon are things that I just needed to do on my gown. And that's the complete gown. So I took all of the inspiration from these images and many more, and this is the result. Hello, my name is Zoe Le Roublin. I'm a fourth year student in costume studies in the Fountain School of Performing Arts at Dalhousie University. So this is my gown. I was inspired by uh, this gown, which is a wedding ensemble from uh, Jeanne Paquet for the House of Paquet. It is two pieces, a bone bodice and a skirt. The original, as well as mine, is made out of a silk jacquard, a cotton net, and a satin ribbon. I added uh, pearls. The real one has flowers, but uh, this is my little touch. <laughs> so the bodice is based off Janet Arnold book, and the skirt is based off an original pattern from the Torton International System from 1910. So I did hand sew all the pearls around here 
as well as the ribbon around the neck, the waist, and throughout the gown. You can also see the closure in the back with the bow. So for the skirt, I use a pattern system uh, for dressmakers from the 1910s. And that's how I uh, made the bottom layer of the skirt. The top layer is just one big piece of fabric. And uh, because we can see on the picture, there's no side seams. So this is my dress. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Kate Campbell. I'm in my final year in the Costume Studies Diploma Program at the Fountain School of Performing Arts at Dalhousie University. So the dress I used as my main inspiration was designed by Madame Duyeux uh, in 1910, and it was designed for Princess Alexandra of Wales. And she never actually got to wear it because around the time this dress was made, her husband actually passed away. So she went straight in the morning, all black clothing, and this uh, purple dress was never worn. Um, so for this project, it still won't be worn, um, besides on my <laughs> half scale model, but it was still really interesting to um, explore the construction and the embellishment of the dress. Um, it was definitely hard to figure out because it is not like normal dresses uh, from the time period. The opening of the dress is not at the most common at the center back, but instead at the side front. So I had to figure out a way to make the dress seem seamless, but still have that side front opening where she can get into the dress quite easily. For that, I went to a Janet Arnold book, found a pattern draft from around 1910. I used that as my main uh, mock-up bodice, and then kind of built from there. So for the materials of this dress, it was very common for a lot of evening gowns to be made of silk. So I wanted to incorporate that in basically all of my layers. So the lining of the bodice and the train of the skirt is a silk taffeta. And the main fabric that you see, the brilliant blue, is a silk chiffon. And then beneath that, it is a white silk satin. Um, and it provided just a little more uh, support for the chiffon so it can give that nice flare over the petticoat. Then for the bodice, obviously I really wanted to focus on the embroidery aspect of my inspiration. Unfortunately, not all of the uh, pieces were put on to my dress, but I am still happy with how the pieces I did accomplish turned out. So um, I hand embroidered all of the uh, embellishment that you see. Uh, it was a lot of hours. <laughs> it was very calming while I was doing it, actually. It was just creating a surface design on these strips of ribbon and on these pieces for the front panel of the bodice and the sleeves. I wasn't able to take every single design of the embellishment from the original dress, but I simplified it and I still kept the essence of this uh, design. And yeah, I, f I feel like I accomplished that rather well. My favorite part of the skirt is, it is a ball gown, so I was able to drape it in a way where it just flows down from the waist and it just creates this beautiful silhouette uh, from the side and from the back. This was the first time I ever did a project like this and it has been a very interesting experience, uh, especially during this uh, COVID situation that we're all in. Uh, but I am grateful for the experience and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.